set time to be holy. Speak of with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Don't be fitted for service aboard. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's worship Him and thank Him for bringing us Let the Lord be glorified. Let the Lord be magnified. The worship. Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we bless your name because we are seeing reality over and over we thank you because you are almighty you have all the power and we can trust in you thank you for giving your power to the righteous jesus says behold i give unto you power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that gives us boldness, confidence. And Father, thank you also because of almighty power you have over Satan to free your creatures, your children from the hand of Satan. Lord, the message that we have before us now, may it walk in our lives. May the power of God walk against the devil to destroy satanic forces and to free your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. We are talking on the principles of deliverance from witchcraft and occultism. The principles of deliverance from witchcraft and occultism by this we mean there are people that are practicing witchcraft and occultism there are people that are under the power of the enemy the power of Satan and he is using them in witchcraft to do evil against humanity to do evil in the church and such people also need deliverance by the power of the almighty god witchcraft and occultism the occultic people may say they are not witches and wizards but they are because what they do is witchcraft it's, a, it's an evil thing 
they employ the power of Satan to do what they are doing, to do wickedness, to do evil. It is the work of darkness. It's the work of darkness. So altogether, the Bible calls them witchcraft. Pharaoh did not want the children of Israel to come out of his power and control. But to remain perpetually in Egypt to serve him and his people. He made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. He believed he had all power. He did not know about God and so did not believe that anyone else had power above him. I'm bringing out the power of Pharaoh to show you the control he exercised. To make you understand the power Satan has over those he has rendered captives in witchcraft and occultism. In, in Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 3, verse 6 to verse 15, Exodus chapter 5. Verse 1 to verse 3. And after, afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. The power of witchcraft, the power that keeps the people in witchcraft is claiming the, the, what Pharaoh is claiming here. I know not the Lord. The Lord is not known. It's not recognized. The power of the Lord is not known. It's not recognized in the realm of witchcraft. Where they operate, they believe that they, they have absolute power. Even as Herod, I mean Pharaoh is saying here, I don't know the Lord. I don't know anybody who has power over my life, power over me, above me, that can have any influence over my life. So that's how the witches and wizards are trained to believe that there is no power above their power of course one of them was saying we grew up to see that whatever we wanted we had it we were told that we had power to do and undo we didn't recognize any power of god because even the churches we had power over the churches we had power to subdue members of the church leaders in the church to do and undo with them so we never knew there was any real power existing anywhere that's what Pharaoh was saying yes and they said the God of the Hebrews hath made with us let us go we pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Now, it's a new introduction that was being made to Pharaoh. That there is another God, a power. The God of the Hebrews. The God that had influence, high influence over humanity. He is the God that has manifested himself. And so we are speaking to the realm of witchcraft. We are saying there is a higher power. There is a higher realm. The realm of the living God. The God of creation. The one that made heaven and the earth. He is great God. Almighty God. Before him, every knee bows. We are introducing Jesus to the realm of witchcraft. To the realm of occultism. That there is the almighty master, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the one that made man, 
the one that met Satan, the one that Satan is using is his adulterated power, his a power that is corrupted. The power of God is original. The one Satan is using is a corrupted one and does not have as does not attend to the power of God. We are talking of a great God of power. We belong to Him. We serve Him. We are walking by His authority, by His command. Yes. So we're introducing that God to the realm of witchcraft. So Moses was introducing the God of Israel to Pharaoh. He says, the Lord God of Israel that has come and has asked us to come and be delivered, to get out of your power and go to the wilderness to serve him. Because Pharaoh had this, he laughed at it. He laughed at it. See in verse 6, and Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people, and their officers say, Ye shall no more give the, the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tell of the bricks which they did make there heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof. For they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let them more work be laid upon the men that they may labor therein and let them not regard vain words. <laughs> you can see I'm talking to you because the forces of witchcraft, the superior ones there feel that talking about God is vain words, useless words. Who, who is God? That's what they're feeling. That's what they're feeling. It's as the Muslims saying, who, who is this God that you are worshipping? Don't worship him again for three months and I will deal with you. They feel they don't know who is God. Is, that's why. It, God really prepared for them. God prepared for them. You knew what followed up in Egypt. What happened in Egypt. The power that God released over Egypt was to answer these people. You say you don't know me. You think you have all power. I will now walk in your realm. I will now manifest myself in your nation. I will display my power. A little of my creative power. I will manifest it in Egypt. And Egypt shall know. And Pharaoh shall know that I exist. The very God. The living God. The creator God. So, but... It tells us also here the oppression that Pharaoh oppressed the people of Israel. It was a heavy oppression. It talks that in witchcraft, there is heavy oppression over even the people there. The people that practice witchcraft are passing through great burden. They are passing through great oppression. Great oppression. They, because they are restless. The assignment, the work that the devil gives them there is heavy work and they must do it. Even things they cannot do, even things human beings cannot do, they, they force them to do. Otherwise, we we'll deal with you. It's not a good place. Anybody in witchcraft must want to come out because where you are is not a good place. Where you are, the torment is terrible. We're enjoying God. We're enjoying liberty in the presence of the highest power, which is the power of God. He gives us power of liberty. But you are under adulterated power, under corrupted power. And yet the oppression which you are passing through in the kingdom of witchcraft, the oppression you are passing through in occultism is very terrible. No rest for you. No rest. You have entered into bondage. You have entered into terrible things, terrible situation. Yes, look at it now. In verse 10, And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. 
Go ye, gather you straw, where ye can find it. Yet, not out of your work shall be diminished. You see, go and look for wherever you can get the straw to make this bridge, but you cannot reduce the number we want you to make. You have been commanded to make per day. You cannot. We were bringing water for you. We asked some people to be helping you with water, but no more help from water. And the straw that you need to do, to do the bricks with, you will go and look for it wherever you go to find it. But then, don't miss one brick per day. He said, it's a risky business, a terrible business, restless business. That's why the people, you must come out of that place. I say you must come out of that place. You are restless in that place. You are oppressed in that place. The, the, the devil is tormenting you in that place. And God has a better place he's carrying you out to. Yes. It's a terrible place. So, the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the tax masters hated them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel which Pharaoh's tax masters had said over them were beaten and they demanded wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making bread both yesterday and today as heretofore then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh saying wherefore delays thou dost with thy servants we are restless we cannot make it this assignment is too much. We can't perform it. The environment that is not suitable for it. Well, how do you look at this thing? Show pity for us. Consider reason too. It's a kingdom of no reasoning. There's no righteous reasoning there. There's no mercy there. No. You're asking for reasoning? It's Satan walking in anger because he wanted to to him is revenging on god to carry you into the realm of witchcraft he's he has gotten a people he will oppress he has gotten a people to oppress you were deceived by saying if you join witchcraft you will enjoy power now you have joined it is rather you that are suffering more than the free people it is rather you now It's because satan is oppressing you he is revenging upon God. You have come under his power. He, you can't cry to God to hear. There's nothing God can do for you because you are in his realm. And he is torturing your life. Restless. You die. You go to hell forever. Woe for you to be created. It's a bad thing that you were created. Where were you created? They couldn't have created you. To create you and, and make you enter into witchcraft. To create you and send you to the world of occultism. That's the worst thing that can be done to a human being. It's better you were mad on the streets. It's better you were mad on the streets. Going about picking things than you be a witch or a wizard. Or than you enter occultism. Restless! By the work of the taskmasters. By the activities, forceful activities that are going on there. Satan's power and, and control over witchcraft see. Witchcraft covers all satanic activities and power expressed by witches and wizards, marine spirit agents, occultism, and so on. Those collecting and using charms are also practicing the same thing, witchcraft. As Pharaoh exercised authority over Israel in his domain, so also Satan exercises absolute control over those that enter into witchcraft here the knowledge of the power of god is absent the knowledge of the power of god is absent you are told that there's no power but satan's power you are told that there's no power but the power that you have the power that exists in satanic kingdom so all that you are struggling is to attend to your assignment so that you can be promoted to higher power you can acquire higher power higher power higher power in various levels that's all you know gather all your power we march upon it and it scatters because we're dealing with the highest power 
we're dealing with a superior power i am jubilating over you i am rejuvenating over you because jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth and he has conferred this power upon me he has conferred it upon the righteous if you really want to exercise power it's not in witchcraft it is not in the realm of witchcraft if you want to exercise power it's not in occultism it's not by charm it's not by spiritism it is by jesus it is by coming to belong to god that is where power exists once has god spoken and twice have i, have I heard power belongs unto god not to satan if power belongs to satan christianity would have died since it would have died the time it started because satan didn't want it if, Christ, if power belongs to satan holiness revival movement will have disappeared from the earth it will have disappeared from the beginning but because higher power is moving here higher power is walking here that is why you see holiness revival movement moving forward by the power of jesus christ and i'm inviting you to this power to possess this power to live by this power and your master satan shall come under your feet the lord shall push him under your feet you will exercise power and authority over them over those tax masters that are not giving you rest i invite you to where power belongs and not corrupted power adulterated power that they are deceiving you with so that is the situation that we are talking about the power of god power exists in christ in job 21 verse 14 and 15 i'm telling you in the realm of witchcraft they don't recognize that power exists that god exists with superior power in job 21 14 and 15 therefore they say unto god depart from us for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways what is the almighty that we shall serve him and what profit should we have if we pray unto him this is what exists in the realm of witchcraft they tell god forget that they tell the children of god forget the laugh at that who is the almighty that we should desire him that we should serve him that we should say we will be delivered for a higher power that's why they cannot the deliverance is difficult because they convince them that there is no more power anywhere so the witch the wizard believes that if he says i'm coming out of witchcraft they will kill me who will kill you when you god the creator of the creator god and the creator of satan and all those agents say come out when peter was told to come to see jesus did he not drop into the sea and walk on it but they said no there's no power anywhere G satan has all the power with that lie you remain there otherwise you would have come out of witchcraft you would have come out i'm telling you underneath are the everlasting arms with everlasting power to deliver you if you dare to come out and satan will just will, will have no power to control you satan will have nothing to do over your life because you are entering into the realm of the higher power you are entering into the realm of the superior power you are entering into the realm of the creator power that's what i want you to know concerning power yes the word of the living god satan sees these people as his lawful captives his lawful captives you have entered you in witchcraft satan loves over you because he got you rightly and to him who will challenge him who will challenge him they are his lawful captives and satan is a terrible one look at it in the book of isaiah chapter 49 isaiah chapter 49 i want us to read verse 24 to verse 26 shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered shall the prey be taken from the mighty 
who catches his prey. A cat has gotten rat. A lion has gotten an animal. Can anybody remove the animal from the lion? Can the rat be removed from the cat? That's what the word scripture is saying. It's talking about Satan. He feels he is a lion. The strongest animal. That's why he deceives people. But it's a lie. He tells them, I am the strongest in power. And he has caught you into witchcraft. You are now a victim. Can you be delivered? And he said, he lawfully got you. It was by law. He rightly got you. That nobody will win the case over him. For getting you into witchcraft. And having control over you. He said nobody will win the case over you. That's what he's saying. That you are a lawful captive. Why? He said you were delivered to him by your parents. They that gave birth to you on earth delivered you to him your mother covenanted with him and delivered you to him your father covenanted with him and delivered you to him so it, he got you rightly he followed the rule and got you again he is saying you were initiated into witchcraft by some satanic agents Somebody caught you and brought you to him. A fellow human being like you got you, initiated you, and brought you to him. So, that Satan is saying, where, do you, where, where are you saying I'm, I, am, I am at fault? They brought him to me. They delivered him to me as a gift. They delivered him to me as a service rendered unto me. And of course, of some, he said, they willingly yielded their souls to him. They willingly, in consent, agreed to belong to him. That's what he's saying. Ask him. Did he not come to himself? Did, come. Did you not go to the internet to fill the form? Were you not the one that went to the side of becoming a witch and began to fill the form? Were you not the one that went to the herbalist? And say he, he should make you a wizard? Well, you know the one. So, which way is Satan guilty? That's why he's saying that you willingly delivered yourself to him. You came to him and pleaded in your house. You were crying every night. I want to be a wizard. I want to be a wizard. They are oppressing me. If I can be a wizard, I will know, I will know those people. I will join them. I will deal with them. They will not oppress me anymore. And you keep on speaking, keep on speaking, keep on speaking. Satan answered you and appeared. I met you a wizard. I will send somebody to initiate you. Then, which way is he guilty? That's what Satan is saying. He counts you his lawful captive. Many of these people prefer Satan to God for the benefits they are getting from him. Many, many. In Jeremiah chapter 44, I read verse 15 to 19 many people they prefer satan to god because of the benefits they are getting from satan jeremiah 44 verse 15 to 19 then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods and all the women that stood by a great multitude even all the people that dwelt in the land of egypt in Patros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing going forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers and our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals 
and were well and so no evil. Can you see? We had plenty money. We had plenty riches. We were well. We saw no evil. No man hurt us. Yes. We were defended. Demons surrounded us and defended us. No man hurt us. That is how it is. We kill whichever persons we want to kill. We drink whichever blood we want to drink. No man hurt us. That's, they love this thing. They love witchcraft. Exercise of power. And the benefits of evil. Which they gained from it. They can kill. They can make blind. They can fly. They can travel fast to this place. They can disappear. They can do this. They, they like it. They like it. They like it. Willingly they like it. They like him more than God. They said, no. As for the word of God, no, we will not do it. We love this demonic power. We love satanic power. Because we belong to higher realm. We are in a higher society. Our eyes see. We can see. We know. We understand. We belong to satanic realm. We can move in the spirit. We are, we are, the men, well, we are not women. The women are sleeping. See them sleeping. But we are men awake. We are men in the society. We are men. A, a story was said of a wizard. Some boys were discussing in the village. And they discussed to the late night. This man wanted to go into the realm of witchcraft and go for meeting. He waited for the boys to finish. They couldn't, so he had to come to them. Go back home, we leave this place. Men want to exercise themselves. He says, it's a man. Corrupt people. You're using corrupt power. You're using satanic power, which is wasted power. You're eating bread with mocos. You're drinking wine that has spoiled. You're not using the original. You're using corrupt adulterated power not original and adulterated medicine does not cure anybody that's what you are busting over a power that is that cannot stand in the sight of god a power that cannot stand in the sight of righteousness no it cannot that is where you belong to you are in the back backyard you are moving in the bush not in the main road you are walking in the bush not in the main road i'm telling you this to show that satan is wasting your life Look for God and be saved. Come to God and be saved. Come to Jesus and don't boast over vanity. That is the word of God. But see these people here. Look at what they are saying. They don't want to hear God. They don't want to hear him. In verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine and when we burnt incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drinks offerings unto her without our men can you see leave us alone we say hey come and serve what is the benefit that's why they're asking what benefit is it if we pray unto him depart from us we don't need your ways that is witchcraft realm. I pray the Lord will come to you. You are too precious to be there. You are too precious to be there. You are, of, you are, you are glorious. You should not be in witchcraft. You should not be in occultism. You are too fine to be there. Where should a fine person like you be in witchcraft? Where should somebody like you that can achieve a lot for humanity be in the corrupt side of life? So, that is what you need to know. They believe their activities and gathering. That's what they believe. They believe that their activities and gathering are so secret that no man can identify them. Not even God. That is a lie. You are telling lies. They tell you lies that nobody can know you. It's just lie. Just lie. Just lie. God doesn't know you? Is there anything in the secret that God does not know? See what this, they think about themselves. In Psalm 73, verse 6 to verse 12. 
Psalm 73, verse 6 to verse 12, it goes, Therefore pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walked through the earth. Therefore, his people returned hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. They kill, kill the innocent, shed blood, and say, how does God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Does he see us? Are we not in the secret? Is it not after uh, when people have gone into sleep that we go? Do we know? Do we even go physically? Don't we even go spiritually? Does anybody see us? What a deceit. There's this animal, not a ghetto lizard or some, this type of animal like that. When it sees people coming, it will run and put its head under a place and feel that nobody sees it. Although you are seeing the tail, you are seeing the body. Well, as long as I'm concerned, I'm hiding. My head is under somewhere. I'm not seeing. It's you that are not seeing. But others are seeing you. They deceived you. And told you that nobody sees you. God reveals you. He reveals to whomsoever he wants. So your things are not hidden. It's just, it's God. All these things is just the mercy of God. It's the wisdom of God. That you have been living in that place. And walking in the church and even being a leader in the church it is the wisdom of God it is the mercy of God the Lord had told me he said my son not all the people I give you are born again there are some people I brought to you for mercy so that at least they should know when they come close and hear and even handle the thing themselves they might be convicted and give their lives to me well he is God and I may not know them. He does what he does. And that's what he has said. Some may manifest later and say, eh, so you were not born again. Eh. But that's what he said. So that is it. It's the mercy of God that keeps quiet over you. And you're walking up and down in the church thinking that they have not known you. Thinking, who, who is knowledge? God is knowledge. God, he said, I am understanding. I am wisdom. I am understanding. I have power. Who told you that you, 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 are, you are on your own? That no, you are not known. You are deceiving yourself like that animal. Yes. That's why they, they deceive themselves. They feed on wickedness. They oppress the lives of men, women, and children. They feed on the flesh and blood of human beings. They display power over others according to their corrupt desires. They belong to a kingdom and increase in power and control by the more evil and wickedness they manifest against men and against God in favor to Satan. Witches and wizards in the church. Are they in the church? They were formed purposely for the church. Because that sin is paramountly against God paramountly it is against god against the ways of god against the people of god against the name of the lord paramountly if you see them enrolling you into witchcraft is for god to fight him is for the way of god to come against it is for the people of god to destroy them to block them to resist them that is it yes they form part of the natural people that come to the church for fellowship. It's only that their salvation is difficult because of their allegiance to the spirit world of Satan. In a church where the environment is ignorant and sinful, where God doesn't exist, God is not there for their sin, 
They blend and live their normal life and perform their activities freely. Where, where the gospel, light, and power of God is, they get properly organized and controlled by superiors to achieve their goal. Yes. Where the environment is stronger, then the witches and wizards gather themselves and organize themselves. Real organization comes in to handle the matter. Let's work together. We're children of one Satan. We're children of one kingdom. We're fighting for one kingdom. We're fighting against God. My own pain is this Satan has turned you against your creator. This Satan has turned you against your creator. Has turned you against your God. This Satan has brought you against your God. He, to him, he cannot go to heaven again. And he is making you to be hated by God so that you should not go to heaven. That's where the matter is. That's where the trouble is. Yes. Enough of his oppression over you. He wants God now to deal with you. But he tells you, don't bother. He makes use of the patience of God for his creature. Because usually you did some evil and reward didn't come immediately. He said, ah, did anything happen to you? Move! The patience of God. Why is God patient? Because if he picks you, you will not be, you will not be there. He knoweth your frame that you are of dust. If he visits you, you will perish. But you have not yet been born again. You have not yet repented. You will vanish from the earth forever. You will drop into hell. Although Satan deceives you that hell is not for you. He has a kingdom. He gives you a phantom drawing. Carries you to a, a world of pictures. Not reality. As I see how beautiful a place I'm preparing for you. It's a liar. Those things are pictures. They're not reality. They're pictures. You're seeing them. They're not reality. It's, there's no kingdom but of God. There's no beautiful city, beautiful place, built for the wicked. No, not so. Not for Satan himself. His final abode is hell. He will be in the lake of fire, eternal. How, why, what does he have the power to build a city beautiful for you? It's a lie. All those things he's showing you, is, they are lies. They are lies to corrupt your life, to distort your life change your vision and make you perpetually wicked and evil against your creature and his children so that is what satan does yes so as children of the devil they are enemies of all righteousness and perverters of the right ways of god as zealous as you see them it's a lie. As zealous, it's a lie. It's a lie. They are against what they are doing. Although they are doing it positively. You, are, you see it positively. It's a lie. It's a bait to confuse the normal man. To confuse the normal man. It's a bait. It's as when you want to catch a goat, a sheep, a lamb. You carry something to give it to eat. You are giving it to it so that it should come closer. But your aim is to catch it. To confuse it that, no, we're in peace. Yeah, we're in peace. I'm giving you food now. I'm doing this thing now. It's a lie. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 13. Acts, chapter 13. I read from verse 6 to verse 10. The Bible says, And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Can you imagine this man? He was a prophet. And prophets have to do with God. But he was a sorcerer, a wizard. But a prophet, a wizard, a prophet. A wizard, a prophet. A wizard, a prophet. Can you These two things are still matching up up to today in many churches in many environments 
Wizard, wizardry, prophecy, prophetess, witchcraftsy, prophetess, witchcraftsy, prophetess. They are joined together in one woman. And you see her prophesying well, but it's a, it's, a, it's a witch. So you see this man here. What was he doing in Sergius Polos? Definitely had to do with God. But the perversion of it. The perversion of it. For some benefits of, for himself. Yeah. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Polos. A prudent man who called for, ba for Barnabas and Saul. And desired to hear the word of God. Uh -huh. This is what all his life was against. This is what witchcraft will be practiced against. What purpose? This man must not be born again. But go and see, except by revelation that Paul discovered him, he would be doing everything looking positive. How? Oh God, hear them. These people, we have heard about them. They have been doing good. But he is doing another thing. He's doing another, another thing in witchcraft, say. To ensure this man does not understand what they are saying. Some things are known, some are unknown. That he will be doing. But he will be saying, ah, wonderful. Yes, you people are telling the truth. I know it. That, what about that other maid? That saw Paul and uh, Paul and Silas. He said, these men are speaking the gospel of truth. These men. You think that it's a true spirit in her? No. Spirit of witchcraft. It's not a true spirit. The forces that are being released in the spiritual realm is to block anybody from hearing them. Block anybody from believing them. That is it. So see this man here now. Appearing positive. So this man desired to hear the word of God. But Elemas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. This by Jesus, son of Jesus, remember this after resurrection, could he not be the Jesus of Nazareth? He was naming himself after. By Jesus, son of Jesus. A prophet, rather. It must be Jesus of Nazareth. I am the son of the Jesus of Nazareth. But see him now. Seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. That is acts of witchcraft. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, fool of all subtlety. Subtlety talks about shrewdness. Secret wisdom. Cunningness. Doing it in the hiding. Full of all subtlety. Now, the, the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts that the Lord has made on the earth. That very wise. Shrewd wisdom. Evil wisdom. That's what is said here of witchcraft. Evil wisdom. Shrewd wisdom. The ways are purposely formulated. The actions are purposely formulated. The relationships are purposely formulated. The good works are purposely formulated. That they are to achieve a thing that you may not know. And Paul said, Oh, full of all subtlety. And mischief. Full of it, evil, evil, poisoning, planning for the fall of someone, planning for the destruction of someone, mischief, full of it. But by Jesus, son of Jesus of Nazareth, son of Jesus. Oh, full of all subtlety and mischief. Thou child of the devil. Exactly. That's who your father, your father was or is. Because he went to the Garden of Eden. 
He used subtlety and brought mischief to the creatures of God there, to Adam and Eve. Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, with all the adoing that appears to be promoting righteousness is a lie. The prayer is a lie. The evangelism is a lie. The fasting is a lie. I call everything. It's a lie. Your zeal is a lie. Because thou child of the devil, your father is a liar. And the father of it. So he, the, he does not abide in the truth. There is no truth in him. So you too is a lie. There's no truth in your life. There is no truth. No good thing is in your life. To favor righteousness. To favor the righteous. To promote the righteous. No good thing is in your life. That is what the, the Bible is speaking about witchcraft. How can you be like this? How can a precious creature of God be like this? How can you be like this? How? How can the handiwork of God be as corrupt as you? That you're not bothering to come out of witchcraft. You're not bothering to stop that evil organization. To come out from that evil association. You think that it's his life? That it's peace? It's joy because you see other people in it. What does it mean? That you see other people in the aeroplane and they're telling you that the aeroplane will have a crash. The pilot has come to you and said, we have tried our best. They, we cannot do anything anymore. Everybody say your last prayers because we shall crash. Then you say, you count how many people? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's the governor of the place. Okay, that's, hey, oh, even the president is here. One, two, three. Does that help you? So what does it mean? Even whoever is there, save yourself. Your life is more precious. Save yourself. Don't take, don't take pleasure in the multitude. Being there. Do not follow the multitude to do evil. That is the word. Save your soul. That is it. So, he, he, he said, enemies of enemy of all, no small righteousness do you favor. No small one. Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? They are perverters of the ways of God. That which is correct, they will pervert it. They are the ones that sponsor false interpretations of the gospel of Christ to turn away the people's faith. They sponsor false interpretation. They are the ones bringing baptism in the name of Jesus only. So that when you believe, you are turned off from the correct instruction of Jesus. They are the ones that brought about the teaching that says, rapture is happening after the great tribulation so that the consciousness of the rapture should not fill you and then you you prepare your life no you it will be after tribulation to relax your life they're the ones they are the ones they are the ones that sponsor the translations of the bible of many bible versions they are the ones perverters of the ways of god perverters of the ways of god they are the ones they are the ones that sponsor many things to corrupt the church. They bring about many festivities, many organizations. They form many unions in the church. They are the ones that brought football into the churches. That uh, church A should play ball against church B. They are the ones to corrupt the church. Perverters of the ways of God. They have perverted many churches. They have corrupted many churches. They have killed many churches. They have rendered them useless. And we are conscious of them that this church will not be perverted. In Jesus' name! That's to tell you these people, so that you don't belong to them. It is not easy to identify them because of the strategies they use. They feign to have possessed all that makes one a true Christian. 
They demonstrate much zeal. They are charitable and give a impressively for the gospel and the welfare of the brethren. They seek leadership position for to better their subtle performance. Yes, they give wonderful testimonies, lying testimonies. They do serious restitutions. Some of these restitutions, they practically did it. Others, they formulated the, the testimony. All to, to make themselves great. It's not easy to identify them because the righteous also do this. The righteous also show that they possess the righteousness of God. Yes. The righteous also demonstrate zeal. Yes. The righteous are charitable and give impressively for the gospel and the welfare of the brethren. Yes. The righteous also desire to lead the people of God for righteousness. Yes. So where how will you identify them except God shows you? Except God shows you. Satan, their father, loves them to go into prominence in the church for some reasons, including the following. One, to lock them up by fear and shame of repentance. Yes. Yeah. So that they will not confess and renounce their state, being leaders and workers in the church. It is the best way Satan can silence them. When she has become a choir member, check up with all preaching. When we say, yes, you want to give your life to Christ. Do you see anybody from the choir coming up? Are there no sinners there? But, ah, how do I come out from the choir? I've attained to this high position. If I come out now, then my choir will, will stop. They will, tell, they will say, hey, so you are a sinner in the choir. No, 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 don't go back there again. Ah, then my work will stop. Satan will reason with them. No, you can't go out. It's not possible. And he is already a leader. How will he confess? Even when the revelation knowledge is given. Yes. There is a pastor here. This is what you do. This is what you do. And the Lord wants you to come and confess. How can it be you? Pastor. Satan has taken you to a realm. You, you, they have known you to be righteous. They have known you to be a preacher. They have known you. How can you be the one to come out and be saying this? Hey, he will make you to be a pastor's wife. Finish. You are the mother of the people in the church. All people look to you as their mother. How can the mother of the church be a witch, be in marine? No, 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 no. no. It cannot be. If maybe prayer during prayers, the power of God struck you and you fell down. Bam! Oh, this stomach ache that has been troubling me, I'm telling you. You know, I've been telling my pastor, I tell pastor to pray for me. He pray, for, see me now. See the stomach ache. See how I didn't know I fell down. How will you say you fall by the devil? How will you say Marine? Kai, pastor's wife. I mean, he locks you up. The positions you, he gives you locks you up until hell. That is why he's looking for position for his children. Again, to use them as his agents of evil to their death. If you can't come out, then you remain under his power until you die. The more you delay, the more you are a, a recognized. The more you are promoted. The more you are advanced, the more people praise you. He will organize people to praise you and give testimony about you. How good you are. How wonderful you are. Then how will you come out again? How will you come and say, uh, Brethren, prayer warrior, I, have my, I, I am in Marine's kingdom. How will you? Pastor, uh, mommy, say it again. What do you say, mommy? Uh, how will you say it? The devil. Subtle. Oh, full of all subtlety. Mischief. That is what he does. So that you just now keep on serving him. Keep on serving him. Keep on serving him. No way out for you to be, to be released anymore. 
Again, to put you on check supervision and discipline. Put you on check supervision and discipline. Now, people are checking one another. Hey, somebody comes and says, yes, in holiness revival movement, uh, all witches that are there are going to hold meetings. And they're sending text message to you. Uh, the meeting of the ones in Abuja is going to be in this place. You say, ah, you send text to me. Ah, we know you. You must be there. We know where you belong. You must be there. We know, you. We know ourselves now. So, that is it. it. To make you come into that fellowship. So that you are supervised. If they don't see you tomorrow, they go for you. If you, if you dare take any step, they'll pick you up. They connect you as chain. If there's a movement anywhere, there is a resounding in various places. And there's a movement there. Who is the one? There's something about somebody there is making a noise. It's as if it's saying that he doesn't want, he, want, he doesn't want Satan again. He wants Jesus. We hurt him. Please go for him. Please go for her. Please go. You are put in a system. You are computerized such that salvation is difficult. Discipline comes upon you. Do anything wrong. The discipline is too much. So much that you won't ever dare to think it again. You see what Satan is doing? And see how God gives us the knowledge to understand how you are going through. What you are going through. It's a heavy thing. But then you must be saved and delivered from witchcraft and occultism. Through the gospel, you must be saved. In the book of Exodus, I told you how the power of Pharaoh arrested the people, never allowing them to go. Yes, he said he didn't know God. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 9, then the Lord said unto Moses, Now, shall thou see what i will do to pharaoh for with a strong hand shall he let them go and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land his power the lord is ready if you can cooperate with god to manifest excessive power over satan in the kingdom of witchcraft with outstretched arm he will bring you out of that society that evil world, dead world, cursed world, a cursed world. The Lord will, will manifest himself. Allow God. Touch God. Give God chance. Invite God in reality. You will see what he will do in that kingdom. What he will do to, to the queen of the coast. What he will do to Satan, his demons, to those personalities that magnify himself. Allow God. He will enter for your sake and discomfit that place and pour fire upon that place and kill many of those places of that place. Allow God. He said, Now you will know. For these children of Israel, now you will know what I will do to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh must let you people go. I'm going to manifest power. Yes. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Abraham knew me as the mighty God, the creator that has all power. But more than that, I am Jehovah. Nobody compares to me. Self-existent. Nobody. I do as I will. None can challenge, none can withstand. Nobody in the whole world. No power is equal to man. I'm coming to manifest this power in Egypt. Yes. <laughs> he told Pharaoh, for this purpose I created you. To allow you to, to go into satanic realm and get your heart hardened against God so that I will be able to pour out my wrath 
and cause the world to know that there is God in heaven. For this purpose. So, allow God. Let him release his power against witchcraft in your family. Come out of that place. Don't mind that all members of your family are witches and wizards. I say, make up your mind and say, I'm coming out. You will see what the Lord will do in that family. Nobody will touch you. Nobody. Nobody can be hired from anywhere. No power in the sky. No power in the water. No power on earth or under the ground can touch you. Allow God. He allowed because he has given you your will. You willingly gave it to Satan. Satan said, you are a lawful captive. He got you rightly. Confess against Satan and cry to God and see what will happen. Go for deliverance and see what will happen. Whether you will not be free, you will not die. That's what you need to understand. So, and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I've also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. You are suffering there. No rest. You're groaning. God, the creator of your life, said, I have seen your groaning. Restless. No peace. You are spoiled. God says, I know. I know how much you're suffering. They gave you an assignment you couldn't do. They came and bullied you. The way they did it. The way they did it. Terrible. Terrible. Some of you, whenever it is night, you are afraid because you'll be going out on witchcraft and you have no power to keep yourself. You must go. And what they will do to you there is not easy because you have failed assignment. You have failed assignment. And you are bound to fail. And yet, they are not no mercy. God said he has heard your cry. He is ready to manifest his power to save your life, to deliver your life. To break your yokes. To deal with those taskmasters over your life. We are for. Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Tell them. Tell them. The Lord said I should tell you. The Lord said, he's tell, I should tell you that he is the Lord. And that he's going to bring you out from that burden you are passing through. From the burden of, of Satan and wicked men in witchcraft, in occultism. He said, he is going to rid you out of their bondage. He will lose you. All those things they hang in your, your body. They, he will lose you of them. And he said, he's going to redeem you with power. Redemption must be with power. That he will redeem you with power. I'm talking to you, pastor's wife. I'm talking to you, pastor's child. I'm talking to you, leader. I'm talking to you, woman. I'm talking to you, man. The Lord wants to release mighty power on you. The Lord wants to release mighty power on the, on the kingdom of witchcraft because of you. He wants to break the power. He wants to destroy that kingdom. He wants to spoil those people to get you out. He would do to your people, to those people as he did in Egypt. Eventually, Pharaoh shall ask you to go. All the Egyptians shall ask you to go. They shall plead with you, move out in haste. And those that dare to follow you shall be drowned in the Red Sea. The Lord is ready to do this for you. Ask him. Seek for deliverance. Don't think that all power is of Satan. It's not. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. Salvation from witchcraft is by exercise of divine power. As the salvation of Israel from Egypt, God has the power to save, to save the witch, to save the wizard, to save the occultic. Follow the following principles. Number one, believe that God has the power infinitely above satan and man to save and protect you believe it why are you afraid why are you afraid in the book of isaiah chapter 51 
Verse 12. Why are you afraid? God has power above those things. God has power above those things. Ah. Even ah, I am he that comforted you. Who art thou? That thou shouldest be, should be afraid of a man that shall die. And of the son of man who shall be made as grass. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens. And laid the foundations of the earth. And hath feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. As if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? God is saying, it is I. I that told you I will serve you. I is the creator that said I will pro that is promising you I will deliver you. But why are you afraid of man every day? Why are you afraid of the son of man every day? To the point that you forget your creator, the God of power. The God of ability, the God of strength, the mighty creator that created the ends of the earth, that stretched forth the heavens by his own power, that made the sea, that made the sun and the moon. You forgot the great God and you are fearing every day because of a common woman that says he's queen of the cross, common man, or Satan, a creature in the hand of God and feared every day. Where is the power of Satan? Where is the power of man? Where is the power of the queen of the cross that you are disdaining God for man? Respect God. He has power above those things. He has power above those things. He has power above those persons. He has power above you. All the things you have in your body are dead things. Fear God. Give him honor. Come to him and see. Take and see you will see that life exists outside witchcraft peace exists outside witchcraft glory exists outside witchcraft joy exists outside witchcraft and occultism it's waiting for you believe god has superior power consider your final end everlasting fire if you don't do you're going to everlasting fire if you don't come out, you are going to everlasting fire. If you don't repent, you are going to everlasting fire. You shall be born forever and ever. In the book of Mark, chapter 9. Mark, chapter 9. The Bible tells us in verse 42 down to 48. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a, miles, a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life meant than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Whosoever among you shall initiate these little children that are coming up innocently, coming up ignorantly, and are for God, you initiate them into witchcraft. It is better for you that you carry a heavy stone and put it on your neck and sink into the water and drink and die in water than that you, of, you initiate these little children. The Lord shall deal with you. 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 These people who want to serve God, these people who are looking for God, they fall into your hand they fall into your hand and you turn them to witchcraft you turn them to occultism they are they think that you're a christian not knowing you're a snake in a green snake in a green grass and they, they they came to your house you gave them food you gave them this pretending you are a righteous person pretending you're charitable it is for witchcraft the lord shall deal with you the lord shall deal with you the lord the lord shall deal with you the lord shall deal with you, the lord shall deal with you. That's what the word of God is saying. That is what the word of God is saying. You are, they gave you the game of initiating people. The, your God will meet with you. He's waiting for the due time. He's waiting for the due time. Then you will know who has the power. Satan or God. 
You will know it. Who has the power? Satan or God? That is the word. I'm telling you, repent and I was hell is waiting for you. Verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life men than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their womb dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life men than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their womb dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire where their womb dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Whatever you are fearing, you will lose. Lose it. Ah, if I come from which come out of which car, all my money will go. Let your money go. It's better for you. Than that, that that money should go. Than that you will be cast into everlasting fire. Consumed forever and ever. Where wombs that will be walking on you will not die. If you are going to lose yourself. Lose yourself. Come out from witchcraft. And lose yourself. It's better you die in righteousness. Than that you preserve your life. And enter into hell, hellfire. That the fire is not quenched. The wombs don't die. That's the Creator talking to you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for all your masters. Those who have died are there already. Those who have died, who come check among those people in witchcraft. It's not lie they're telling you. Which person has lived forever? They just deceive you that this one who died a serious wizard, they have transferred him to another place. This one who died a serious witch has transferred the world of deception. It's appointed unto men once to die. And after death, the judgment. But they're deceiving you there and telling you that no, when you die, you come to a better place. Which better place? Is hell a better place? Is hellfire a better place? So take note of this. Take note of this. And save your soul. Yes. Consider your final end. Everlasting fire. Be determined and courageous. To come out of witchcraft and occultism. Not minding whether you will perish. After that. Don't bother. Whatever will happen to you. If it will really happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let us see. Come out and let it happen. We will kill your father. Allow them. Kill my father. I'm coming out. We will kill your mother. Kill my mother. I'm coming out. We will kill your children. Kill my children. I am coming out. Yes. In the book of Esther. Esther. Chapter 4. Verse 15. And 16. The Bible says. Verse 15 and 16. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai. This answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink. Three days, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Everybody say it. If I perish, I perish. Say it seven times. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. The last time. Simple. But I must come out of witchcraft. But you must come out. You must come out. I release the power of God upon your life to break your yokes. Let the power of God break your yokes. Let the power of God convict you. Let it serve as a burning fire. Let the Lord loose you from witchcraft. Hey! In Jesus' name. If you perish, 
perish but you must come out so that you go to heaven you can't be in that kingdom anymore you can't be under the tax masters of wicked people anymore you can't increase the wicked things you're doing anymore no take that step take the risk take the risk take the risk yeah number four employ wisdom which may include change of environment in the book of proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 and verse 5 to verse 7 the bible says get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the weights of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding from god you may change your environment it might require so it might require changing your environment you may you may withdraw from your marriage it may require so because i am married to this man who is a serious wizard and there's no way i can be saved if i remain here i am a witch too this marriage must stop for my eternal life i would disappear from here i would tell the man uh bye bye i prepare and just vanish i'm going to another place to seek deliverance from witchcraft is then I'm, I, I will come and preach to him i am free do you want to be free if you want to be free i am coming back if you don't want to be free i am not coming back because i know light and darkness cannot do it together i'm talking to somebody who is in witchcraft or witchcraft not you i know now my husband is a wizard but you're not so you can't leave that marriage you can't already you can you can make heaven the woman who is a witch cannot make it that's why she's using wisdom so she too can make heaven but you you can make heaven if you follow god righteously what and you can have a higher power over that man you can have higher power of course even the woman who goes to get salvation the lord she might get higher power and say go back there and deal with that wizard your husband and she can come back and deal with that witch witchcraft by her by her prayer and it will work the man will become helpless because superior power is with believers so apply wisdom nicodemus did his own by night he knew he couldn't go by day so he went by night to meet with jesus to get born again otherwise if you went by day people would say eh? you are a ruler of the jews our pastor you want to go and shame us so he went in the night so use wisdom to get yourself out of witchcraft you can leave your family or everybody there is a witch a wizard leave the place go to a place where you can get deliverance for yourself because if i live here they will check me they will supervise me the battle will be great for me i can't survive i'm going to another place yes again seek for a true church and true minister of christ to conduct your deliverance seek for a true church and a true minister of the gospel that will conduct your deliverance for you it's not every church that is a church it's not every people every group that say we're doing deliverance that are true no some of them are demonic some of them i say satan will want to fix his people inside prayer warriors they will be there their purpose is confuse what is going on there affect what is going on there resist anything going on to cast out the devil for somebody take over that person and say you'll be the one devil, devil come out devil come out she's delivered you're delivered say i'm delivered but he's a wizard himself can a wizard deliver a wizard so the devil has planned these things he has planned them so make sure you go to the right place right place he that walketh with wise men shall be wise 
a companion of fools shall be destroyed you go to where they are fools you face more destruction they will put more demon in your life to put more demon in your life and confuse you yes make you twice a child of hell that's what jesus Christ was reproving the pharisees yes again make full confession with repentance without hiding anything you have engaged in full confession because it's god that will deliver you you have problem with witchcraft and when you came before a true minister he said i have been dreaming i dream i eat in the night in fact i dream that i saw myself standing by water is it witchcraft no 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 no, no. it's not witchcraft oh is that uh, is that can you is that witchcraft can we call this one witchcraft you are using your game you are using your shrewdness you are using your subtlety it's before god nothing let him that does not know that he shall get nothing from the lord those prayers are going to god he will not hear them because you are a liar you are not telling the truth you're not revealing the true condition you're not you're not revealing the true condition you go to the hospital and you say doctor uh, this is, i am feeling this way how do you feel you will not tell the doctor the true condition you deceive him and he's busy writing drugs according to your narration the thing has to do with your private part but you say the type of headache i normally receive okay how does the headache start when it starts it moves to my bone yes the doctor is prescribing drugs that will never work on your life because that's not where the sickness is so when you go and tell lies don't expect deliverance tell the truth the truth shall make you free ye shall speak the truth and the truth shall make you free but tell lies you will go in that condition because god hates liars these six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are abomination unto the Lord. The lying tongue. The mouth that frameth deceit. God hates it. He will not hear prayers on you. Again, submit for destruction. Every satanic substance with you. Reveal the one swallowed. In Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 18 to 20. Acts. 19 18 to 20 and many that believed came and shot their deeds many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and they found it fifty thousand pieces of silver so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed they came confessed and shot their deeds shot their walls they shot their evil works which they have done and you you hide your work you that's why you don't want anybody listen just within the week a revelation came on one of the overseers state overseers of a church this state overseer has been working for long and the revelation showed that i knew him and he did something favorably even to me and then after that he withdrew and stood afar off uh, why i thought you have known that i am of god come up let's joy together for you what you did to to favor me let's joy together go uh, what happened that this man went to stand aside he went there to be telling me that i should forgive him of witchcraft because he's a wizard i should forgive him of witchcraft i have i told him but you must go and open up i can't do it privately to you go and confess and open up then i will forgive you ah oh, this too much 
How will I go and say, state of Isaiah is a wizard? How can that be? Can you see the situation? Can you see what Satan can do to lock you up with position? Where did you look for position when you are not born again? Where didn't you withdraw? Why didn't you refuse it? That's why when somebody refuses continually, better accept you don't know who he is. You don't know who he is. So this is the matter. It's not a private matter. It has to deal with God and must follow the law. It must follow the rule. Reveal those things you have done. Bring up those materials you have used. Confess those wickedness you have done. And then show remorse that you want to come out. The Lord will save you. The Lord will deliver you. But he that hideth his sin shall not prosper. It's only he that forsake, confess it and forsake it shall have mercy. May the Lord make you go the way of mercy. So you can have mercy this time that you are alive. Otherwise, a time will come. You will look for it. You can't find it. Let's rise up upon our feet and worship the Lord and say, Thank you for this day. A day that the Lord planned to catch many people unawares. A day the Lord opened the heart of people so that the truth should enter in. Mad people are said to have a time in which they come to their senses for a while so they can understand their cases well, their positions. So now the Lord has given you this period. Your heart could not harden. This thing just entered into your heart. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. Seek God, you will find him. Call upon him, he will hear you. This is the day of salvation. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for your children. Pray for your friends. Pray for your parents. Thank you, Jesus. I plead with you, come out of witchcraft and occultism. Come and make confession. It's not a matter of shame. It's a matter of salvation. Appreciate for this knowledge. Appreciate for this knowledge. Appreciate for this knowledge. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to seal this message in the hearts of people. It's not easy for a witch or a wizard to even hear a message and understand it because of what Satan has done to the heart. But this message, they shall understand it. In Jesus' name! This message shall break through to their heart in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Break through their heart to their hearts. They shall have no rest. This message shall speak in the day and in the night. This message shall speak in the day and in the night. It shall break through their hearts. Lord Jesus, seal it in their hearts. He shall talk to them day and night. He shall disturb them. He shall convince them. He shall bring them out. In Jesus' name. Let the message enter into your heart. 
Let this message enter into your heart. Let the word of God enter into your heart. Receive it in your heart. Receive it in your heart. Receive it in your heart. Let it overcome the force of resistance. Let it overcome the force of resistance. By the power of God. By the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 you can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe Savior. Jesus, I, I believe. believe.
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe. 